that, that chapter is an injunction. It's like, take a look at the people that are around you. And if they're not on the side of what's good for you, then walk away because, well, first of all, that's best for them too. If you put up with that, all you're doing is enabling it. It's like, well, it's okay that you mistreat me in a way that's harmful to me and everyone else. It's like, actually, no, that is not okay. It's not, in, it's not the least bit okay. That doesn't mean you shouldn't try to help someone when they're down. That's a whole different issue. What if it's your family? So you know how you say like walk away, right? Do you still walk away from your family? Kind you do of? if it's necessary. Yeah. There's lots of different ways of walking away. Sometimes someone's on an incorrigible path. Yeah. Like there's just nothing you can do. You know, maybe they're aiming down and they're bitter and everything they do is to produce misery, virtually everything. And you have to detach yourself from that. It's like, I always think about it from the perspective of a lifeguard. So if you're training to be a lifeguard, one of the things that you're trained to do is to approach someone who's drowning and panicking. And the way you approach them is you put your foot out between you and them and you push forward with your hands with your foot out. And you basically tell them if they're flailing about, say, look, I'm here to help, but you have to calm down. And then if they cling to you, like in panic, you push them away. You think, well, that's pretty damn cruel because what if they drown? It's like, yeah, what if you both drown? That's like not helpful. You're, you're there to rescue them. They take you down. You're both dead. It's like fail, right? It's like, well, it's the same with someone in your family. It's like if they're on a downward path and you've done your best, you know, you've, you've made your efforts, you've, and they're not paying attention. They're not changing. They say, yeah, well, I'll quit doing this. Yeah, I'll quit doing this. They tell you the same story over and over and over. It's a downhill path. You don't trust it. At some point, first of all, you stop offering your words. If you're offering words of wisdom to someone in the genuine attempt to help, and they treat that with contempt, then shut up because you're demeaning your words by throwing them away. You think, well, how do you help someone who's aiming down? Well, sometimes you help them by walking away and saying, look, you're aiming down so hard, despite the fact you're my brother, man. It's like, you know, this is killing me. You're aiming down so hard. I'm not coming along with you. And the reason I'm not is to tell you in no uncertain terms that what you're doing is so terrible that I will even violate our kinship to oppose it. And maybe it'll take them 10 years to wake up to that, you know? And so that can be the case because, you know, people often have to be hit so many times before they'll learn. You see that especially if someone's addicted or otherwise pursuing a pathway that's like seriously downhill. Mm. So why should I think that you're actually trying to change? You are you tell me the story that you use to justify your own idiocy to yourself. And then you tell it to me and you demand that because I'm compassionate, I accept it and therefore validate your excuse. It's really hard not to get tangled up in that, right? Because if someone who's really in rough shape is telling you about why they're suffering, first of all, they're probably about half right in their story. But some of it's justification and excuse and blaming and all of that, failure to take responsibility. It's really hard to stand up and say, no, I don't buy that. No, you're wrong about that. You have to be a brutal bastard in order to do that. But hey, sometimes like surgery is brutal, yeah. right? It's brutal. Welcome to the CWC podcast. Welcome back, everybody. We appreciate you being here with us again for another video. Thank you to everybody who's watched any of our videos so far. We appreciate uh, all support that we've gotten so far. Uh, I think we've got like 62 or 63 subscribers. Hey, that's me. I'm boss player with that. I'll take them. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're growing baby steps here, but uh, we hope that you are enjoying the content. Um, today's show is, you saw the clip at the beginning, and I think that probably resonated with a lot of you. Um, I think we're going to talk about toxic relationships today, and this is kind of the culmination of what we've covered so far uh, on the modern dating uh, topic. There's a method to our madness here with the shows that we're, we're cutting and the way that we're shooting them. We want to kind of relate things to a specific topic and then kind of close it out with a big video at the end, and that's kind of what this is um, on the modern dating front. Uh, so we're going to be talking about toxic relationships. Uh, I think everybody can kind of relate. What is a toxic relationship, right? What does that mean to you? What's a toxic relationship? Do you think? Um, feeling obligated, feeling obligated uh, to stay in a place that is no longer healthy for you, but um, for whatever reason, you can't leave 
you feel obligated to stay. There are other variables and factors um, that keep you tied to the person. Okay. So obligation, uh, feeling that you're supposed to stay. Um, I think a lot of us can relate. And this, guys, this has nothing to do with, understand this. This is not just marriage. This is not just um, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. This is, this is parents, yeah. siblings, yeah. friends, friends. Uh, coaches. <laughs> I mean, yeah. to- a toxic relationship yeah. can be any relationship. So this, that's why I think this topic is, is so broad because it covers all of those things. It has, it's not just, you know, re- marriage dynamics or relationship dynamic. I mean, it covers relationship dynamics as a whole. So that's what we kind of want to focus on today. Uh, and our bullet points, our talking points that we have for today that we want to throw out there is being alone versus being lonely or is there a difference to that? Like if, if somebody chooses to be alone, because um, you, you've been single for quite some time, mm-hmm. right? Um, you've been single longer than me. So you get asked all the time, but aren't you lonely? Yeah. So you say what to that? Or I've even been uh, said to, wouldn't you rather be with someone mm-hmm. than be alone or lonely? And I was really confused by that because I w- would much rather be in my own company mm-hmm. and feel good in my own skin than to be around someone that isn't making me feel good just for the sheer fact of not being lonely. And mm-hmm. I can tell you there, there's a thing you can feel lonely with someone. You can feel, I think you can feel lonelier with someone because that is probably one of the worst feelings is being with somebody and they're right there and you feel lonely Mm -hmm. and then being alone but not feeling lonely like I've gone through that before where I was like but when I was alone I didn't feel lonely I felt more lonely with you in the room because they weren't giving you what you needed or there wasn't anything there it can hurt when you're with somebody and, and, and you feel lonely with someone there. That's interesting perspective because um, it's a little bit opposite to or counter to what I normally hear. Like normally when I talk to, especially uh, a lot of females, they, uh, they, they tend to go from relationship to relationship to relationship because they really, really, really do not like being alone. I, I've had girls tell me that, yeah, I was dating this guy, but I just didn't want to be alone at the time. You know what I'm saying? Like it's kind of throwaway for her, like in that way, right? Just because she needs someone to fill the void and that gap until she finds the next real relationship. Yeah. That, um, I think that is detrimental to you down the line because I think it, uh, you build up kind of, I think, a insensitivity to people's feelings because some of those people that you're meeting along the way are people that like you for real, right? Yeah. And then you, and then, and then when you are no, you're using them because you're empty. Yeah, you use them because you're empty and then you suck them dry and now they're a carcass on the road and you're moving on to your next kill, so to speak. Pretty much. So um, so that's, and for me personally, people ask me a lot. Uh, pe- people know that I have a, a, a child though, that, so I'm busy with my child a lot. But there are people that say, but, but man, it's been a while. How come you're not, you know, you don't have a girlfriend? You know, you don't have, yeah. like, I, I don't understand. I, I have people, mostly gir- women. Girls ask me, not so much guys. Girls are more, but it's weird. I just, it, why don't you have a girlfriend? It just doesn't make any sense because they're used to being in relationships, right? They're used to having. I get a- the same thing. I get yeah. people that say to me, okay, I mean, you look good and everything. And da, 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 you look, now you just need a boyfriend. Now yeah, you just need you a husband. Sure and I always talk. go, why? Why do I need a boyfriend? <laughs> like, yeah. why do I need one? Now, these people tend to be married. To say this to you? No, it's a little it's mixed, a mixed bag. bag. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Because I, I always wonder that too. Like, um, you know, that like people who have that relationship bias of, and there's guys I know like this too, that they, they just can't, they'll, they've, they've, they've been honest. I mean, they tell me, they just say, Hey man, I don't like being alone. Yeah. I don't like being by myself. I had a guy, I had a grown man tell me that I just don't like being by myself, man. I was like, okay. I mean, it, it's cool. I mean, I, I've heard I, it too. I've heard it from, from grown men too. Yeah. 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 So it's, um, so that's the question we pose also to the audience, you know, is, is there a difference? Like if you're being alone, I, because being alone, I think you're, 
you're alone by choice. When, and, and you're alone just means I'm by myself. Yeah. Yeah. You're by yourself. It you're, doesn't mean that I feel lonely, mm-hmm. feeling lonely. Mm-hmm. It hurts and sucks, but being by myself is, is okay. That, and I, I think that makes more sense. Like, cause you said someone can physically be there, but it, it can be so absentee within that presence that you're very, very lonely now because you might be in the next bedroom just dying for the attention of this person. Wishing that they and would you, come through the door. Yeah. Yeah. And Call not, your name. Yeah. And you're yeah. not getting it. So it's very, yeah, I could make sense. Interesting uh, dynamic. With that being said, I'm going to share one quick article uh, here with uh, regard to loneliness. So this is um, the loneliness epidemic persists. So this article was from very recent. I think it's from uh, August the 8th or something like that. But it talks about the uh, the loneliness epidemic, a post-pandemic look at the state of loneliness among U.S. adults. This uh, link will be in the description box for you guys because I recommend reading this article. Uh, I was taking a look at it when I was doing research for the show. So there's some items here. Uh, some bullet points uh, that just gives you kind of some demographics. It talks about uh, so people from underrepresented racial groups are more uh, likely to be lonely. Uh, 75% of Hispanic adults and 68% of Black African American adults are classified as lonely. That's very high. When I yeah. read that statistic, that kind of, I was like, really? That's yeah. a high number. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about three quarters of Hispanics and I mean, 68% of Black people. Wow. That classify as being lonely. Um, that's very, very high. Uh, it talks about people with lower incomes being lonelier than those with higher incomes. I think that's just because people with money can buy friends, right? <laughs> <laughs> they can buy good times. Yeah, at least they can buy something. I'm lonely. I'm going out tonight. Yeah. At least they can do that, right? Uh, young adults are twice as likely to uh, to be lonely than seniors. Um, that I guess that makes more sense. I mean, because Actually, yeah. I mean, that's an interesting. Seventy-nine yeah. percent of adults aged eighteen to twenty-four report feeling lonely. Only forty percent of seniors. That goes to what I was telling you about in my in my twenties, mm-hmm. in your twenties. I think you know you're not so sure of yourself. And for me, it was like um, I needed to be around people. I, I felt mm-hmm. like I had low self esteem. I did. Um, I had low self concept. Um, I got bored very quickly, mm-hmm. and I needed people around me. And if you don't have people around you, you feel like, you know, you're young. So is there something wrong with me? Why am I yeah. not out having a good time? I should have friends. I shouldn't be sitting here lonely. Uh huh. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, and there's some other bullet points here. Uh, more than twice as many younger adults as older adults experience feeling left out. Feeling left out. Hey, everybody's had that, right? You found out that there was a dinner party that you didn't get invited to. Uh, you found out there was a gathering over here. And we've all had... Have you've had that feeling in your stuff? What, what did I do wrong? Why didn't they invite me? It's we've all had that feeling, right? You find out later on that I, I remember that happened to me one time. It was a group like a, they we went to a movie or something like that. And nobody told me. Yeah, and it was one of my really good friends that that did it. <laughs> so it was, so it was like that hurt. I ain't gonna lie. I was hurt. <laughs> on that. I ain't gonna lie about that. Uh, men and women have roughly the same likelihood of being lonely. Okay, that makes sense. And then there's some other information down here. So I recommend that you guys check out that article. Like I said, the link will be in the description box. Check it out. Uh, it's got some good information just on, uh, man, loneliness, I think, really sank in during the pandemic because everybody was, uh, yeah, you know, people were isolated, separated, segregated, uh, whatever term you want to use. Um, and people went through real, really rough struggles. I mean, mental health issues went through the through If you the had roof. COVID, you were... Locked away by yourself too. Yeah, yeah, you were and scared and not knowing, you know, what's going on. Yeah. And, uh, and if you, if you were watching TV all day, if you were watching the mainstream news, you were really scared because it was like because it was a constant drumbeat of uh, bam, 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 bam. So and you're isolated and you're scared. So uh, I think loneliness all this makes perfect sense to me. I mean, especially coming off the pandemic. Um, but even putting the pandemic aside, I think that we're in a post pandemic. I think we're at a point where a lot of people, because a lot of people lost relationships during the pandemic. A lot of people got divorced yeah. during the pandemic. Yeah. Um, so I think we're, loneliness is on the rise. That's why they call it lonely fans, guys. Uh, not only fans, lonely fans, because 
most of the people paying for OnlyFans content are lonely men. Mm. But that's for a different show. But that's uh, and that's why it skyrocketed during the pandemic. So the statistics bear that out. It yeah. all makes sense. Uh, and, and you can see it in the data. So um, so we'll talk about it. Let us know what you think. Leave us a comment on this. Uh, you know, and uh, and how do you react like to when people say, hey, so but dude, aren't you lonely? Yeah, maybe not. What do you say? Maybe like, not. People ask me, I'm like, nah, not lonely at all. Not at all. Not at all. I mean, are there times when you feel a little lonely at times? Sure. Everybody feels that. But yeah. by and large, it's not a, you know, pressing thing that, man, I feel real lonely. Because like I said, I have a kid, I have hobbies, I have things I'm doing. I'm very, very busy. My time so slots are full. Time slots are full. Exactly. So, um, so I have a lot of time things. to feel lonely. Um, now, bullet point number two. Toxic relationships, why do people stay in them? Um, as this relates to loneliness, uh, I think it goes to people would rather have somebody there than nobody at than all. Than nobody at all. So even somebody they don't like. Even somebody they don't like. They yeah. feel like it could be a roommate, whatever. Yeah. So um, why do you think that people stay from a female perspective? Why do females stay in a toxic relationship? Well, I think I think women stay. Because there are usually extenuating circumstances. There's mm-hmm. other variables. Um, there are, and that feeling of obligation mm-hmm. that you get from, you know, you feel obligated to, to stay with him for the children. You feel obligated to stay with him for our, our families. Our families expect us to stay together. Um, what would, what would people say? You know, mm-hmm. now I've got to explain myself to everybody like, Maybe I can make this work. Maybe maybe it's not that bad. Then you start comparing your relationship to other people's relationships that are mm-hmm. far worse than yours just to talk yourself into kind of saying, you know what, maybe it's not that bad. Mm-hmm. You, know, mm-hmm. um, you do a lot of talking yourself into and you do a lot of. Um, and there's guilt that's kicking in because you're saying, like you said, you would compare to maybe your neighbor or your girlfriend who's having even worse problems yes. with her man. And, and I she, should just be grateful. And she may even tell you that, right? Well, at least mm-hmm. your man doesn't do this, exactly. right? And then it yeah. makes you think, well, am I just ungrateful here? Yeah. Maybe I'm. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's me. Yeah, yeah. 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 It makes you question question yourself. And I think that's what it is too. Like a big part of it, you have the psychological battle with yourself of, okay, is this me being selfish? Is, is this me? Is this me expecting too much of the other party? And are people going to say I'm being selfish? Yeah. Because yeah, we worry about what other people think of course, tremendously. Of course, of course. Instead of really worrying about our own well-being. Because your well-being is what matters here. If you're in a relationship with someone that's toxic and making you feel um, unwell. Yeah. And you're staying because you're afraid of what other people are yeah. going to think and say. And a lot of people do that. And to your detriment to becoming sick. Physically sick. Yes. Yeah, yeah, physically sick. You can you can literally start to deteriorate in real time. Yes, if you stay in that situation, a little bit of long. stress, a little bit of insomnia, a little bit of digestive issues, a oh. little bit. Your body starts throwing hints. Something's wrong. Mm-hmm. You got morning sickness. There's something. I had this happen to me with a job. It, I it was to, a toxic I, relationship. I, it's you can have a toxic relationship. With a job, with an mm-hmm. employer. I had this happen. My body was letting me know. Every morning. Dude, you can't keep doing this. I mean, I, ha- I had never had stomach ulcers in my life. I'm calling my mom like, what does it mean when <laughs> <laughs> I was all messed up? Yeah. All messed up. And then what the word I kept hearing was stress. So stress, stress, stress. And I'm like, okay, well, what's, and the, the, the doctor says, well, what's your biggest single point of stress? I'm like. Oh, geez. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> it's my job, <laughs> right? So, uh, so yeah, it could be a job, a toxic relationship with a job. That's what I'm saying. It could be anything. Uh, not It doesn't have to be a specific person. You could even have a toxic Something relationship with a dog. Something you feel obligated to that makes you feel unwell. Yes. Yes. <laughs> makes you feel unwell. Absolutely. Yeah. Great, great way to, to put it. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I'm pretty sure a large, if not everybody in the audience has experienced some form. Of a, of a toxic relationship and then finally when you get that breakaway moment where you break away so yeah. how do you heal so i'm going to share another article with you this is another really good article 
and it talks about uh, how to heal from a toxic relationship. So this article is actually very recent. It's from uh, September the 16th. Uh, therapist is just taking these seven steps to heal from a toxic relationship. So we're going to go through the seven steps quickly here. Um, surround yourself with support. This goes to the clip you saw at the beginning of the show. Surround yourself with positive people, yeah. friends who legitimately want to see you do well. Yes. They want to see you succeed. They give you positive reinforcement, positive encouragement. Now, your partner or your spouse is supposed to do this it's all the to time. Be that person. Yeah. All the time, though. That's the thing that a lot of people don't realize when they get into a dedicated relationship or marriage, whatever. Your spouse is supposed to do this one all the time. So they're supposed to they're supposed to be that person that at any time when you feel you can Man, go to I them. need to that person has to be there. If that person ain't there, you gotta start over. Yeah. You gotta start over. You then 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 it's all out there. No, nothing else matters if that's not on. So so I think that's that's big. Um number two. Uh, prioritize self-care. Now, this is something that I want to throw to you because this is something that I watched you do mm -hmm. uh, when you made your transition to, to veganism and you and you really rampantly changed your life. Um, so one of the things I started doing first was exercising mm -hmm. and I took up running and during our 5K era. Yes. Yeah, we were running 5Ks. Hey, we were yes. brother and sister 5K team for a for a few years. Yeah, that was fun. CCA in the house. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so that's how, so you started prioritizing it with, you know, you found a hobby, you found a healthy hobby. Mm -hmm. Um, and you started to prior, did you start prioritizing yourself a little bit more? Like, did you get your hair done a little bit more? Often? Yeah, did things like I that? did because there was a lot of things you do. Uh, you put yourself on the back burner a lot of times for your family and a lot of times for your partner. Mm -hmm. And, um, sometimes if that person isn't making you feel very good, you don't feel very good. And, mm -hmm. and you let yourself go, you can mm -hmm. let yourself go and talk to relationship. And because it's a sign of depression, a sign of not being, you don't feel it from the other person. There's nothing there. So you kind of let yourself go. Mm -hmm. And I think a part of getting better definitely is prior, prioritizing yourself. Good. That's very good. Um, number three, uh, swear off guilt, shame, and blame. Guys, this is hard to do. Um, you, but it ha it must be done. You, you must. Um, stop blaming yourself for anything that happened. You, you have to let it be water under the bridge. Uh, you know, you did things, he or she did things, the guilt, your guilty party aspect, you have to let it go once the relationship is over. Uh, the shame. Yeah, we feel shame. I mean, for sure, you feel like a failure if your relationship didn't work, especially if you were married, yeah. your marriage didn't work. It's, it's a huge badge of shame. But you've got to be able to get over that. So swear it off and then don't blame the other party. You know, just, you know what, at the end of the day. So the key to that is, well, why did you guys break up? Right. Or, you know, whatever the case may be, it's it's best just to just say, you know what, we decided to part. And because it, it, it's not even worth going into the, the spiral of the blame game. Yeah. You could sit there literally all day. You can sit there all day long. Back and, and forth just, all over again. Yeah, no reason to do that. Yeah. So that's a good point. Uh, now, this one I'm going to pass to you because it says write down some list for intentional dating. Is this scripting? Wait, but intentional dating? I, I don't really even understand. Like what it, like what it says. So it is. says after you, after getting out of a toxic relationship, um, it says evaluating two things. What kind of partner were you before? What kind of partner would you like to be? Uh, what kind of partner did you have before and what kind of partner do you want in the future? No, that's not scripting. This is not this scripting. sounds like a form of like therapy and, and some clarity to get yourself some clarity because you weren't didn't do very good the last time. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> so, yeah. OK. What about start journaling driving? is kind of like um, scripting. Now, you can write out how your day went and your emotions and how it felt. Now, if you want to create and create mm -hmm. a new reality, you can script and you write how you want your life to be okay. kind of like, yeah, like a vision board on paper and mm -hmm. you write the story of how you want the day to go or how the day went that hasn't happened yet. So you experience it already. But so is, then, is scripting writing things that you want to happen in the future? Yeah. As if or they already you, happened. Or as if they already happened. Yeah. Okay. My sister knows about scripting. <laughs> she, eventually she'll, we'll do that in the show. 
uh, at some point because uh, I think it's very interesting. But uh, we're, we'll t- it's interesting that it came up in this article. Um, uh, practice boundary setting. I think that's kind of, yeah, I mean, if, uh, most of us, we kind of do that by default after I think we go through a, a bad uh, uh, split or not. Uh, yeah. We, 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 uh, there's the last, a wall. You, there's a big <laughs> wall. And some of us, the wall is, is, is quite big, right? Uh, yeah. You know, we might, uh, it's very, very difficult to trust someone again or let somebody in at that level. Uh, it might be, it might be that difficult for you to dedicate yourself to a job that hard again, right? You, you, you dedicated yourself to this one job and then you, you, you finally get to, and then you, you got screwed over and then you feel like, well, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> I'm not, not yeah. going to put all that effort in at the next company and just to get the same result. Right. So, um, so you start setting boundaries as far as what you're going to do or maybe how hard you're going to work, you know, are you really going to put in those extra weekend hours? Or if, at least when it comes to a person, it may take you longer to warm up again to another person yeah. or you're looking, maybe you're more cautious this time. Yeah. You know? And the last point was to reach out to a therapist, which like, um, I used to be very uh, cynical when it came to therapy. I was like, man, who, how is some guy I don't know going to tell me about my life? Right. That's what I used to think. Right. I, I'm going to pay this guy $110 an hour to do what? So I, used to, you know, I used to say, <laughs> I can just call a friend. I can just call a mentor or whatever. But, th- uh, but I have, as I've gotten older, I've had several friends who have taken up some form of therapy. Yeah. Uh, we know we all experience losses in our life, whether it's a pet, a family member that passes, something like that. And sometimes you need some, you know, some therapy. And I've talked to some people that's been very beneficial to them. So I'm not going to knock it. I've never tried it personally. Maybe I should. But uh, but I think it is a, it's a viable option. I think it's something that can. What, what do you think about ther- uh, therapy? Um, I think, I think like medicine, it creates a customer out of the patient Mm -hmm. and, um, it regurgitates a lot of past feelings and Mm -hmm. scenarios that can open up old wounds. Now, for some people that might work and for some people it might not work, but I know the objective is that it lasts a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, the objective, because they want you to keep coming back. Um, but if it works for you and it makes you feel better, then again, I, I, I don't take that away from anybody. Um, I know for me, I, I did therapy. We went. Mm-hmm. You did? Yep. Oh. Didn't work. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess it can or it can't. Um, I mean, we're not together, so. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's an option. Uh, it's not, like I said, it's not something I chose to do personally, but, uh, and, I, and now what I do recommend is I don't recommend getting on any kind of meds until it's an absolute last resort. I don't think it's something that you should jump to because a lot of people, they might want to jump to meds for that quick fix. They just want to feel better. It makes me feel better. It makes me feel better. It makes me feel better. And next thing you know, yeah. you need it just to feel better. Yeah. I was always scared of that happening. So, okay. but, but it's definitely an option, uh, I think, for people who are coping. Um, so we're going to jump to the next bullet point, um, which... This is this is interesting. It, is there a one for me or a one for you, right? So how do we identify this one for me? I'm giving this one to my sister because uh, I think this is kind of in the spiritual realm. Uh, is there a one for you or me or anybody in the audience? Yes. Okay. I think so. I think okay. there is that one or more than one. There could be more than one person for you that you match up with and have a great uh, story with for that time. And you were the match for that time. But I think you can intentionally set out to meet your your soulmate if that's what you really want. Um, get your energy right, get your vibration right and set the intention and then allow and draw that person into you that matches your vibration. And now you have. Um, someone that matches you. Mm -hmm. Um, But I also think very differently than a lot of people. I I don't, I don't like to put the label of forever on, Mm -hmm. on things. I think it causes way too much um, expectation. I think it's too, you're, you're asking what's forever. I mean that. Yeah. (laughs) And you've mentioned before, you told me before. (laughs) And sometimes people come in your life, for a very specific, particular pers- purpose, 
and you can love this person and they can love you and you learn a lot from them or you grow from them. Something that it was supposed to happen between you and that person and not necessarily mean forever. We change as we age. We change as we grow. Teenagers are not the same as 20 and 20 is not the same as 30. And sometimes people don't change together and that's okay. I think that's okay. Okay. Then you've also mentioned to me before that um, that's part of the reason that you never got married because you don't believe in that forever connection to one specific person. Yeah. It sounds like it's a floating talk. I know some of the traditionists are out here like, what the hell is wrong with this guy's sister? <laughs> I know some of the traditionalists out there are thinking this, right? But like I said, I was the only one in my family to of the siblings to actually get married. So that's why this is an interesting topic and an interesting dynamic. Because I saw it the polar opposite. She did. So, so, that was, so this, this is why this is an interesting topic for us to even discuss. Is because yeah. you've told me this before of why you never did get married. I don't think forever is just a big expectation. It's a big target. And when people don't live up to that expectation, they live in obligation in toxic relationships. And they force feed the relationship and try to make it work and try to stay, even though they know like years ago, it's been over and mm -hmm. um, it's not forever. Uh, you, you Now you, sometimes you wait too long and you've wasted too much time and you cut mm -hmm. your losses way too late and you're an old man or an old woman and yeah. you could have had a portion of your life, but you forced a toxic relationship. So, which this, she did the right thing. She never actually got married because she didn't take those vows, you know, for sick or for poor, death to his part. Never said that. So she she was smart enough to know, okay, I'm not doing all of that. But like, she look at the, the vows. What did they say? No, I'm not doing that. Okay. No, thank you. That's why you, that's why you told me what I, you said. Oh, but I've been engaged. I'm really good at getting engaged. Yeah, really good at getting, I, I would be divorced four times. If hey, hey, honesty right here. Now, as he. I'm just not good at marriage is all. I mean, it's, it's, I, I did, I tried it a couple times, it did work. Um, it's, um, I'm not that good at mate selection and things like that. Um, Most people aren't. Don't beat yourself up. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's complicated. Yeah. Um, but I do have the traditional view uh, on marriage. I do believe that it is, if you do make that connection with the person, it is to death, this part, and it is for richer or poorer, it is for sicker and health and all that stuff. Um, unfortunately, um, especially if you get married early, mm -hmm. I mean, there's, that's a big ask. It's a very big ask, to, yeah. uh, especially in modern, in modern society. Back in the day, I think uh, the marriage rates were more successful they, and they because, mm -hmm. uh, technology, there wasn't yeah. the internet, there wasn't social media, there wasn't all these, uh, uh existential, uh, Vices and things that you could get into very easily or very quickly at the touch of your fingertip, right? You couldn't contact the woman in Venezuela right now. Yeah. Oh, you know? God. So you have so you, many options. The options are yeah. endless. Access to excess. We talked about that in one of the early videos. Uh, it's just too, it's too, there's just too much yeah. out, out here now. I mean, uh, it's very, so I think, you know, if, yeah, if we're talking about like you see an old couple walking, holding hands in the park. When you see that, it's like, man, they, they I was going to say that I was thinking about my residents in my facilities and how the husband comes, he lives at home and his wife's in a nursing home and yeah. he comes to her every single day. Yeah. She's in the chair and he takes her outside and he sits outside with her every single day yeah. Yeah. and yeah. they're married 70 years longer than beautiful some people things. live. Yeah. It's some beautiful things. Listen, to see. I'm a fan of marriage when it's done right. I think it can be the wonderful thing. Like you see yeah. with these, that couple that you saw there, unfortunately. I'm not against marriage. Mm. I just am afraid to do it. No, I, I get it. No, I understand what you're saying. I understand exactly what you're saying. Uh, um, and me, I, I've recognized where I have failed. I realize when I don't know what I'm doing, like, it's like, okay, bro, you don't know what you're doing. Don't do it anymore. <laughs> you're not allowed to, now you're not allowed to get married anymore, bro. No, don't stop, stop. Yeah. You keep on, come on, bro. Definition of insanity at some point. Stop doing the same thing. So, um, but with that being said, we're going to jump into the last article that we want to share for the day. We're going to reference some of these divorce statistics that kind of play into the conversation that we're having right now. So 
on the screen, you should see, um, and this link also be in the description box. This talks about the divorce rate and statistics uh, in 2022. This is from our, uh, August the 8th. Um, how many marriages end in divorce? So some key stats. So in 2022, approximately 50%, so half of all marriages will end in divorce. This is very scary, right? Because it basically means if you get married, you got about a 50%. You, may, you can go to Vegas and put it all on black if you're going to bet on 50%. So that's really your chances of your of your marriage working is a roll of the roulette wheel. Statistically, I, I, I know people don't want to hear that. What that my marriage is going to work. <laughs> so, OK, well, hold on. I'm just giving you stats. Uh, I don't know what stats you see. Uh, so it, uh, it talks about subsequent marriages. So second and third marriages. Uh, 60 percent and 73 percent so 60 percent for second marriages 73 percent for third marriages mm -hmm. and in divorce respectively mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned before that that was why you have less time left and you're not putting up with anybody's crap like as long as you were in the first one like it's like dating in your 40s mm -hmm. you don't put up with anybody's crap anymore the relationships last they're, they're ended quickly yeah. you're like no no, I saw the red flag. That's it. Moving on. Yeah. You learn from the first time. It's like, okay, hey, you learn from the first time. Except some of these guys that you see getting married four and five and six times. I think like Ric Flair has been married, I think, five or six times. And uh, some people just a glutton for punishment that way. But um, but it makes sense. You're just less likely to deal with mm -hmm. BS. Uh, the divorce rate for every um, for every 10 out of 1,000 people in the population, uh, it says it's dropped from five to 2.9. Uh, the merit now, this is the, the big stat the marriage rate has almost half in the last 30 years. Fewer people are getting married, guys. Fewer people are, are, are committed to it. You know what? I think people started to figure it out. Mm -hmm. They were like, you know what? Uh, this is a lot to ask. <laughs> and then, and then what has also hurt this is that the divorce laws, the way that they are targeted to destroy men in divorce, it's a bad business deal. It's a bad deal for most men at this point. So it's like, why would I get married? For what? To, why, why would I risk all of my upside? Yeah. And I have like no protection on the back end. Yeah. Uh, guys have seen enough stories of guys getting raked over the coals 16 ways from Sunday. And they're like, I ain't doing that. Yeah. I'm not doing that. So. Hey, I don't blame them. No. I mean, it's, it's, you know, at the end of the day, is it, is it really, really worth it? Again, you've got a 50% chance of it actually working. See what I mean? Uh, of occupations, right? So bartenders and flight attendants are some of the most likely profession to divorce. I think that makes sense. You've worked as a bartender. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a, a job where you're in contact with a lot of people. Yeah. So, you're, so there's and more night hours and, yeah. and alcohol and yeah. 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 And there's a charismatic guy buying drinks at the bar, pointing to people, ordering <laughs> drinks. There might be a guy that keeps coming in just to sit at your bar. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. He's interfering with your marriage. Yeah, and he's watching <laughs> these chicks get hit on all the time, uh, consistently every day. And then the U.S. has the uh, sixth highest divorce rate in the world. So um, I thought it would have been higher. I thought so, too. I was surprised to see sixth highest. I'm like, there's five countries doing but that's <laughs> But it's divorce rate. So I'm thinking um, maybe smaller populations, the rate would be higher, maybe. <sighs> maybe. Per capita. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> so I'll, I'll leave the... Um, the links uh, in the description box. I, I recommend checking that article out too. It's got some more uh, detail to some of those numbers, but it just kind of illustrates, I think, why marriage um, is. Uh, it's just it's just a really big, big ask, and it's hard because yeah. it requires two. I think it can work, but I think that it's got to be two people. I said it in one of the first videos. You got to be on the same page. With everything. Yes. Everything. Have some things in common. You have to. Just opposites attract business is not yeah. true no nah, not gonna, i don't think it's going to work long term it can work yeah. short term it can be short term fun whatever the case but marriage and dedicating and locking down and let's make this thing run i mean you've got to have so much in common that you know there is no for season. forever to work or forever to work it's a, it's a big big ass it's a heavy word um so um that's pretty much tonight's show uh, we wanted to um touch on all these topics um, we're, we're looking forward to this kind of, like I said, it kind of concludes our modern dating saga that we've had over the, the past few weeks. Uh, yeah. this is kind of a, a cherry on top of that. Uh, we're going to be moving next week into some, um, some different topics. 
And we're also going to be getting to a point where we're going to start uh, bringing on some guests. Uh, so we're going to start having some fun with that. So um, anything you want to say before we uh, wrap up? Uh, Nothing. Nah. All right. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. We're out.